The next part here, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call two-step Avogadro problems. And the reason that they're two-step Avogadro problems is because we have more than one conversion that we have to do. So we're having at least, well, for these, we're going to have two conversion boxes present. So our learning target here is to describe how a mole is used in chemistry. You're going to see our success criteria, same thing that we talked about yesterday. Okay, Our success criteria is the same as we had yesterday. The identify the mole as the amount of substance to recognize that Avogadro's number is the number of particles that are present in the mole. <clears throat> To realize or to identify that Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And finally, to convert between moles and the number of particles in a substance. Now, as we move on, we talked yesterday about how we name the different things. Okay? How we name the different things. And what I mean by things, atoms, molecules, formula units. We stated that, <clears throat> that right there was just a single element. So we're going to call that atoms. We stated that this guy right here, that's glucose. He was covalently bonded together. So we're going to call covalently bonded items molecules. And finally, right here is NaCl. NaCl is ionically bonded, so we call ionically bonded substances formula units. Now, as I look at this page right here, ladies and gentlemen, let's say that we are dealing with two moles of NaCl, okay? So I'm right here. Now, I want to figure out how many atoms of sodium are in two moles of sodium chlorine, chloride, sorry. Now, the rub with this is, folks, is that I can't go straight from moles of sodium chloride to atoms of sodium. I can't go straight because what I have to do first is I have to come down here to formula units of NaCl. So I've got to go from formula units of NaCl, then I can go to atoms of NaCl. So that's why I call this a one, two-step Avogadro, because I have to do two different steps. You're going to see it worked in exactly the opposite way, too. Okay. You're going to see it the opposite way, too. Let's say we still have... Okay. Let's say that we have so many atoms, 3.67 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, and I want to find out how many moles of aluminum sulfide that could have, that could be. If I have this many atoms of aluminum and I want to find out how many moles of aluminum sulfide I could have with that many atoms. Well, once again, I'm going to have to go through so I'm going to have to go right here 
in one step from atoms to formula units, then I can go from formula units to moles. That's my second step. Okay? So we're going to be working them both ways. I'm going to give you a second here. Go ahead and copy this into your notes. This is the first example we're going to work. My question states, how many atoms of silver are in 3.19 moles of silver oxide? <clears throat> I'm going to set up a little flow chart up top here. And it says that I start out with mole of silver oxide. I want to find atoms of silver. <clears throat> so I can see here that I have an ionic compound right here, and I want to go to atoms. So I can't go directly there, so I'm going to have to have that middle step I'm going to have to have that middle step. So my first step, I'm going to convert to formula units of silver oxide. And my second step, I'm going to convert to atoms of silver. So this is indeed a two-step Avogadro. So I'm going to start out with what I'm given. I'm given 3.19 moles of silver oxide. And sometimes, folks, you'll see me writing them stacked, this moles and then the silver oxide below it, only because of space. Okay, Only because of space. Then I'm going to set up a conversion box. And I'm going to make it a long conversion box because I'm going to have two conversions here. So I've got my box a little bit longer. My first one, I need to go to formula units. So looking at my flux capacitor, I would know that I need to have one mole of silver oxide on the bottom here because I want that to cancel. And I'm going to have Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number of formula units of silver oxide. So when I close my conversion box and I look at this and I say, okay, here's a mole of silver oxide, here's a mole of silver oxide. A mole of silver oxide over a mole of silver oxide is one. That cancels. I have now converted this into formula units. Now my second step is to convert from formula units to atoms. Well, what do I know? What's my equality? Well, I know that one formula unit of Ag2O has how many atoms of Ag? Two, right? Two atoms of Ag. My formula units then should cancel. Here's a formula unit on top. Here's a formula unit on bottom. They cancel. So my label, my label that I'm going to have here is going to be atoms of silver. And I have to go through and I do my math. Remember, I multiply by everything on top. I divide by everything on bottom. So I'm going to take the 3.19, multiply it by Avogadro's number, multiply that by 2. I'm not going to divide by anything because I don't need to. I don't need to because it's divide by 1, divide by 1.
and I come up with the answer. How many sig figs do I need to have? How many significant figures do I need? Three. So my answer is going to be 3.84 times 10 to the 24th. And so Mr. Braun can see where my answer is. I always put a box around my answer. Final answer, 3.84 times 10 to the 24th atoms of silver. So that one little added step that we have in there. Go ahead and copy this. This is our second one, our second example today. My example says, how many moles of aluminum sulfate are there if I have 3.28 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen present? So I look at that in my mind. I'm saying, OK, I have atoms of oxygen. That's what I'm given. I want to find number of moles of aluminum sulfate can I go straight from atoms of oxygen to moles of aluminum sulfate I cannot I do not have the same I do not have the same label so what I need to do is I need to go to Since it's ionically bonded, formula units of Al2SO4-3. So that's my first step to go to formula units. Then I can go from formula units back to moles as my second step. So once again, this is a two-step Avogadro. It's just working it the other way. So I'm going to start with... 3.28 times 10, the 24th atoms of oxygen. I'm going to draw my long conversion box. I know I want atoms of oxygen to cancel, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. Well, I'm going to formula units, so I'm going to put one formula unit of aluminum sulfate. Now, how many oxygens are in one formula unit of aluminum sulfate? Twelve. I see four oxygens here. I see three there. 4 times 3 is 12. So my atoms of oxygen, atoms of oxygen cancel. So now I've converted that into formula units. Now it's just a flux capacitor thing. I know that I want formula units to cancel. So I'm putting Avogadro's number of Formula units, aluminum sulfate, so I close up my conversion boxes. Formula units on top, formula units on bottom, they cancel out. So I'm going to have my label in mole of Al2SO4-3. And I'm going to multiply everything on top, divide by everything on bottom. So I'm going to take 3.28 times 10 to the 24th. Multiply one, multiply by one. I don't need to do that. It's just going to give me the same number. 
Then I'm going to divide by 12, get my answer, and divide by Avogadro's number. And I come up with three significant figures. Four. Five. Four. So zero point four five four moles of aluminum sulfate. We okay? Make sure you box it so Mr. Braun knows where to find the answer. Now, our final example today is right here. Our final example is right here. What I want you to do is I want you to copy this down and work it. Once everybody's done, once everybody's done working this, then we will work it together. All right, as I'm looking at this, how many atoms of hydrogen are in 0 0.70 moles of phosphoric acid? A couple things jump out at me. First of all, I am dealing with two significant figures. Okay, so my answer is going to need two sig figs. I'm given moles. of phosphoric acid. I want to find atoms of hydrogen. I cannot go directly from one to the other, so I have to have a middle step. Now, what do we name acids? Okay, Obviously, they're not atoms. So do we call them molecules? Or do we call them formula units? What do you think? Okay. I'll just tell you folks, when we're dealing with acids, we call them molecules. So my first step is going to go from moles of phosphoric acid to molecules of phosphoric acid. My second step is going to give me molecules of phosphoric acid to atoms of hydrogen. 0 0.70 is my starting point, and that is moles get in there my long conversion box. I can see that I want moles of phosphoric acid to cancel, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. Okay, I know that Avogadro's number. of molecules of phosphoric acid. Close my conversion box. I check back up to check to see, yeah, I've got moles on top, moles on the bottom. I get a cancel there. <clears throat> so I have converted this now to molecules of phosphoric acid. Well, I want to go then to atoms. So I know that one One formula unit of phosphoric acid has three atoms of hydrogen. My conversion box closes. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a wrong label there, don't I? Okay. It wouldn't have affected my problem, okay? But since I'm OCD, I've got to have the right label, okay? Because really, what I had a formula unit there would not cancel. So I have molecules here. I have molecules here. I get to cancel. What I have left is atoms of hydrogen is going to be my final label. Once again, I go through the math. I multiply everything on top. I divide everything on bottom. 
0 0.70 times Avogadro's number times 3. That is going to give me 0 0.70 times Avogadro's number times 3. That is going to give me a number, but I need two sig figs. My number I got is 1.26462 e to the 24. So with two sig figs, I'm going to round that up to 1.3 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Put a box around it so Mr. Braun knows where my final answer is. What do you think? Thumbs up, did you get that? Ready to do some of these?